G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech Creative. My name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. Today's video, we're gonna be checking out the K40 Plus Biomtech, so stay tuned. Unlike a lot of the other laser machines that I've used in the past, this one here is completely different. So this one here is using a CO2 tube um, rather than the diode laser that I've been using in the past on other machines. So this one is really exciting to jump into because it has so many other features um, that a diode laser just can't do. I know that there is some pros and cons for both sides of the story, but I really love using the CO2 laser because I've been able to do things that I have never been able to do just using a diode laser. So setting up the K 40 plus was a really easy deal it's um, quite heavy so it took me a little bit just to get on the table but from there on I thought about the easiest way to get it out of the box is actually just to dismantle the box around the machine itself so I went through and cut down the sides and tore it off um, and I ended up with the uh, the machine you can see here that I'm having a lot of fun just tearing the box apart but then it ended up just with the K40 and the contents within it so a couple of things do come with this machine as well you get a water pump for the co2 tube you also get the extraction hose um, and a couple of other bits and bobs in a, in a little case so it's really handy to have that nice and neat. So unlike other machines that I've used it does take a little bit of setup to get going you can't just use it straight out of the box. The first thing you want to look at doing is installing the air extraction hose super easy just uses a hose clamp and goes on the rear vent super easy to install then you just place the other end of the hose outdoors so I can filter away from the enclosed space. The next thing is setting up your water pump system now this is for the CO2 tube it's really important that you use a water pump because without the water pump you'll burn out the CO2 tube really really quickly. So they do suggest just using distilled water for this setup. I was very lucky I just went down to the shops and I purchased a 10 litre bottle. The best thing about that already has a container that I can store the water pump into so I can go ahead and just cut out a small hole just big enough for the water pump then I can go in and install my hose onto the different fittings embed the water pump and then connect everything up. I also went aside and purchased some waterproof tape just so I can put it around the edge of where I had cut open just to stop any leaks or spills it's not perfectly watertight but it's enough just in case I do bump it and I can pick it up quickly or nothing spills out in the long term so it's a really easy installation but I did decide for my setup I wanted to extend the hoses just a little bit I had some spare hoses left over from another project so I went aside and connected those in instead just to extend it for about a meter or so so I haven't had any issues with my water pump pumping up that extra distance um, but the best part is that I can just move that and I can place it in a different area it doesn't have to be right next to my machine. So once you've installed the water pump, the next thing is to getting water around your CO2 tube. For me, um, I just put it on and let it run for a little bit, but what I did find was the top of the CO2 tube, there's about a third of air that was stuck in the top of that tube. Now that was really easy to get out. I just tilted the machine slightly and just allowed the air to flow out one of the tubes and then the rest of it filling up with water. So that was a pretty straightforward process in getting the water set up on the CO2 tube. And then it was on to calibrate the machine. Now it's really important that you set up the machine correctly and to do it I suggest reading the manual. The manual has so much great information it does outline everything and how to problem solve and fix different things on the machine so please make sure you do read the manual because it's really helpful. So calibrating the machine is really important because you have to make sure that the CO2 laser is heading in the center of all mirrors. Now all I decided to do for my setup was to go ahead and put a bit of tape on the third mirror so that's the x-axis mirror where it fires straight down so putting a piece of tape there and just testing it and I did notice that the the little laser dot was slightly off so obviously through the shipping some things do move around a little bit so it's really important to check that the the dot is central especially in that last location I'm not sure if that's the exact way to set it up but I just wanted to make sure that when it does hit my final mirror that that does fire down directly into the center um, so you just got to make sure that you have turned off the, the laser power every time that you do access the rear tube you open it up and then the first this mirror is where I wanted to change the laser direction to slightly just tweak it. You can change the different screws there. So they do provide a little spanner tool to tighten and loosen that screw if you need to. So I just, it was the mainly the top screw that I did change and I tried it a couple of times just to make sure that that um, alignment was getting better and better and getting more towards the center. And I finally got it, it was only a very minor tweak that I had to make and I got the laser point um, dead center of where I wanted to go. So I was really happy with that. So I closed everything up and locked back down my rear axis to the CO tube and then I wanted to get stuck into some cutting. So this is the very exciting part where you get to use the machines. I want to do just a really rough test um, and just see where the machine was
was at from the get-go. Okay, just before I get into the usage of the machine, I want to show you the setup in Lightburn. It's really easy. Just go to Devices and create a manual one. Now, here you'll just hit on the generic GRBL. This is the, the garble board, and you can rename it to whatever you want. So I'm doing Omtech. And go ahead and click on the X-axis as 300, Y-axis as 200, then click Next. And then it's really easy because it just homes to the rear left, and that's uh, really helpful, actually, because you can put your material down once it's out of the way. Go and click Next, and then Finish. Now, I always like to default uh, my current machine, so click on Omtech, and then down the bottom, click Default. Just make sure that it's there next time you go into Lightburn. You can go ahead and click uh, Home. Home will show you that it homes to the back left-hand corner. You can go ahead and do some simple jogging around. So you can click uh, the Y-axis and also the X-axis, just to check that the movement is correct. Then from there, we are ready to do our very first cutting. I got a bit of scrap ply and I burnt uh, just a basic square onto it and I noticed very quickly that the line or the curved line of that laser was quite thick and to me that that was meaning that it was out of focus and so I wanted to try and find the perfect focus but years ago I created a video on how to use the ramp technique. Now the ramp technique is a really handy technique when you're trying to find the sweet spot of the laser so you can consider when the laser comes through it comes down in a comb shape and then it flares out again. What you wanna do is you wanna find that central point that's right in the middle of the cone shape at the bottom there, so you know exactly the distance from the base of the laser head down to where the point or the sweet spot hits. And then you wanna know that distance because it's gonna make some huge differences when you start cutting and engraving. So I went ahead and did a ramp test. Now I did it really easily just with a scrap piece of ply and a roll of tape underneath. And you can see that I created a ramp with my ply and that just allowed the laser head to move over and the material was slanting upwards. That means that the focus could be variable throughout that single line. So on that, I just jumped onto light burn, just drew a single line and just allowed that to burn the single line. And straight away you can see the differences as that laser moves along and it changed the variance of the height you can see the sweet spot there it wasn't too far off but it was pretty close I was quite lucky that I had a piece of uh, plastic lying around that I just slid underneath just to check the depth from the bottom of the laser to that sweet spot that I measured and this piece of plastic was pretty spot on so I used that as my measuring device so I measured it came out to be about 14 mil so what I decided to do from that is um, create my own little gauge setting myself so this one here I have a an engraving gauge, have a three mil gauge, and also a five mil. Now, this machine, reading the instructions, it says that this machine is probably more for three mil uh, material only, but I have been able to successfully cut some five mil acrylic, and that's clear acrylic, and it came out really, really well. So I use this gauge to, to figure out the sweet spot. Now, just remember when you're cutting anything, that sweet spot you want kind of in the central of your material. So you wanna try and aim for that sweet spot on the central, not in the top surface. If you want to do some engraving, perfect. You want to have the sweet spot on the top surface so I can get the nice detail on top. But for any cutting, you definitely want it in the center of the material. So I went ahead and I cut some acrylic. Now, the five mil acrylic came out um, pretty well for the first test. I could see that there was some blowouts on the side. I wasn't really happy with the quality. Um, so what I did then was just lowered the power and increase the passes. So for my perfect settings of cutting five mil acrylic, you can see here, I've just put the settings up there um, but I think there was about three passes on about 18 millimeters per second. So what they allowed it to do was cut it out gradually so there wasn't a, an intensity with the, uh, the power and then blowing out different um, parts of my acrylic. So it worked out really, really well. It's really important to, to test different materials but also try different techniques in cutting to get the best outcome. Okay, moving on from that, I, I actually jumped into a quite a uh, intense project. Um, now this one here is just creating a housing for some electronics that I had. And you can see here that I wanted to create this acrylic case. Um, and the issue is, is that this um, CNC controller that I had lying around that I've been um, doing some stuff with, um, I wanted to make sure that it was protected, that nothing would be able to touch the base of it, short it out. So I want to create an acrylic case. Now to do this, um, I'm not very good at bending acrylic, haven't had much um, opportunity to learn about it, but there's no time to start learning. Um, so what I did before I did that, was um, I cut out some, uh, this is uh, four millimeter plywood. This created the template that I could use to bend around. Uh, this cut out absolutely beautifully. Um, there was a bit of charring just because of this type of timber, but it went all the way through very easily. The engraving came out very nicely. Um, and then from there, I could go ahead and cut out the acrylic. Now, 
Cutting the acrylic, this is three millimeters acrylic, so I just needed one pass on about nine millimeters per second, and it cut it out flawlessly. So I didn't have to cut it out again, it was just one pass only, and it came out really well. I mean, that was just some basic settings to come with, maybe it was a bit too conservative, maybe it could have pushed it a bit faster, but it certainly worked for me. Then from there, I used the heat gun just to, um, to make it malleable, and then be able to bend it around my casing. And it came out beautifully. So I'm really happy with the outcome of that. Um, I'm really happy with the design and the ability of what this machine can do. So moving on to the last test I want to do with the machine, I want to try some exotic different types of acrylic. Now, the reason is, is because I haven't had the opportunity to work with this type of acrylic before. And obviously to convince people why you need this machine is because you can make some really cool things with it. So the first thing is I threw on some confetti acrylic. It cut it out beautifully. There is a bit of an engraving on the front there, but it's really hard to see it in the chaos of the acrylic. Um, then I threw in a mirror piece of acrylic, and I'm really happy about this because this came out beautifully. I thought it had some issues with trying to cut through the mirror part, but it had no problems at all, and this came out really, really nice. Um, then I went on and tried some other types of acrylic, and once again, flawlessly, I didn't have to redo any settings. It just came out the same on each piece, so I'm really, really happy. And then the very final one, I had some of this really lovely plywood that I wanted to try. This is a three mil plywood made for laser cutting um, and that engraved and cut out just amazingly. And I did use the same settings as this, but obviously I could push it much faster when I cut this one. So really happy with the outcomes of this machine, but also the possibilities that I haven't been able to do before. And I'm really excited about the possibilities where I can go in the future. So all in all, this machine, I think costs around a thousand dollars, a bit under a thousand dollars a strain. So that's incredibly cheap for a CO2 machine. But for this machine, you get all the safety features, you get all the additions, all the air pump, you get a water pump, you get the extraction fan, you get a really nice casing that takes it from a class 4 laser down to a class 1 laser, it protects your eyes, it's a super safe machine and I really love it. So guys, if you're looking for a machine that can pretty much cut anything, this is certainly a fantastic machine to look at. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end of today's video, but if you've liked today's video, feel free to give me a thumbs up, like my channel, um, and I look forward to other projects that I can do with this. If you have some suggestions of what I can cut out in this and any projects that I can do, uh, feel free to pop them into the comments below. Aside from that, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much for your support and I'll see you next time.